Hi guys, today we're going to be using an application called Chrome Canvas to make a dot uh, design composition for uh, Dot Day. Uh, and Dot Day celebrates uh, the dot, uh, the, a book um, that explores a young lady who's having trouble with her um, confidence in art and so she creates a little dot work of art and then it explodes. She learns how to make all kinds of great dot art. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to take a look at the story and we're going to take a look at how you can make a design, uh, a composition using dots. So the program is called Chrome Canvas. If we type Chrome and Canvas, as you can see, I've done that many times, and hit enter into our browser, the very first thing that comes up is canvas.apps and uh, dot chrome and <clears throat> it's a web-based or cloud-based uh, application that will always save everything you do directly on the cloud so no matter what device you're using it from whether it's your phone whether it's a tablet if you're uh, on a computer at school on a chromebook at home no matter where you go all your drawings you can go back in and access them and so uh, you can see this is my digital sketchbook it'll start a sketchbook for you these are the drawings I've used you can see I use uh, Chrome Canvas uh, almost every single day I use it to take notes in meetings I use it to make little sketches and drawings gesture drawings demonstrations uh, if you've had my class you've probably gone hey I remember you did that demonstration you're probably seeing images that you see me create in class um, and so we're going to look at how you can create in Chrome Canvas uh, really simply and easily. One of the reasons I encourage you to use this program is you can use it on Chromebooks, you can use it on Mac, PC, um, Kindle, any device that accesses the web should be able to use Chrome Canvas. Now you can start from an, an image if you have a drawing that you've started and you've taken a picture of with your Chromebook, you can bring it in to the Chrome Canvas and then start drawing on it. You'll see I do a lot of those things. But we're going to start with a new drawing. And before we get started, uh, actually drawing, I want to talk to you a little bit about the tools that you have at your disposal. In the top left hand corner, you've got a little dot here that has color in it. This is our palette, our color selector. Now, the palette that is pre-chosen has lots of little colors here from the pinks and reds, oranges and yellows, greens and so forth. But we also have the custom color selector. The way this works is using the little bottom selector, we can choose the color that we want to use. Once we've chosen the color in the top right hand corner of that little rectangle it creates, is the actual color we're working with. The other colors within that rectangle are the tints and the shades, the values of that color. Values how light or dark something is. So light blue to dark blue are the values of blue. If we add white to a color, we get a tint. If we add black to a color, we get a shade. So all these light blue colors are tints of that blue and all these dark blue colors of that of that color are shades of this color so once we've chosen our color we can then choose a tool to use it with and so we've got five different tools here first of all we got a pencil we've got a pen a marker and a chalk pastel tool and of course finally we've got the eraser you can imagine what it does it erases what you've done and so uh, I'm going to choose the pencil and I'm going to look up here at this next little thing and this is the adjustment uh, uh, tool. It allows you to adjust the size and the opacity of your tool. And so let's look at the marker really for this one. If we look at the size, as you can see, as I move that little slider from left to right, the size of the dot or the... Uh, um, tool is going to get larger or smaller. The same with the opacity. Opacity det determines how opaque or transparent what your drawing is going to be. So if you, I go all the way to the right, 100% opaque means that we can't see through it. It's going to be just completely uh, uh, unable to be seen through. Uh, but as we go a little bit further to the left, we get more transparent. Transparent means we can see through it. Um, so you can adjust how transparent or opaque it is. If you're using a tool particularly like the chalk tool, I'll show you real quick. And I've got the opacity turned down about halfway. I'm going to turn the size up so you can see what happens. If I draw with this tool, 
it makes sort of a light mark. But where the transparency is about half, if I go back over, I can now begin make it darker and darker, just like using a real pastel or piece of chalk or crayon. If you do something you don't like, you can use the little undo button. If you undid something you wish you hadn't undone, you can do the redo button. It'll put it back. And then finally, over here on the right, we've got what we call the layers button. The layers button allows us to add extra layers. We can put in many little layers. And think of layers as little clear pieces of plastic. You can draw on one, and I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll, I'll choose this one, and I'm going to draw this blue dot. And then on this one, I'm going to draw a red dot. And then on this other layer, I'm going to draw a yellow dot. Now, what's really kind of cool about this is that if I don't want to see something I've drawn on a layer, if I don't want to see the layer, I can click the little eyeball and turn it off. You see how I can turn off being able to see that layer and what I've drawn on that layer. The other thing is I don't like something I've done on that layer. I can click that little garbage button and it'll delete that layer entirely. If you notice, I'm undoing everything I just did, even the redo stuff I did. Does that make sense? So now let's look at our composition. What are we going to do for our composition? I'm going to pick my middle layer, and uh, because we're just really going to use one layer today anyway. Um, well, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use my second layer in just a minute. But uh, I'm going to choose some dots, and now let's think about dot day. Hmm, what kind of dot... Um, design will you make so i'm going to use blue first and i'm going to make some random dots all over my page and i'm going to use a, an element of art we call variety which means i'm going to have different sizes variety in size uh, i'm going to have variety in transparency some of them are going to be really transparent and some of them are really opaque look at that's opaque versus transparent See, when I have multiple, many different types of those elements, I have variety. So let's look at variety of size. What if I did some of them really big like this? That's a big dot. Now I've got some medium ones and some large ones, and I'm going to do that with my transparency. Let's turn the transparency down and make some big dots that are kind of transparent. Oh, I like that. All right, and did you see how that went over it? It adds layers, so it kind of gives a really neat look to that dot. I love that dot. All right, I'm going to choose color because I want variety in color. And think we're, we're focusing on what we call composition. And composition is how you are going to lay out and use the different elements of art and how they are going to create your final design. And so I want my final design to have lots of variety. Okay, lots of um, uh, repetition. Anytime we um, use the same element again and again, and we're using dots here again and again, it creates what we call repetition. And then another one I want to use is something called contrast. And contrast is when we have two very different elements. Now, we might think of contrast as big versus small. We might think of contrast as dark versus light. I'm going to use contrast by using um, warm colors versus cool colors. And so warm colors are things like reds and oranges. Cool colors are like blues and greens and purples. So right now I've got a lot of cool colors. I'm going to think about adding some of these warm colors. And so I'm going to make some dots like this. Now, when we add contrast, something happens. Our eyes really start to see sort of vibrations when we see contrasting things, particularly in color. When we put colors that are complementary, which means they're opposite on the color wheel, something unique happens. Two colors that are opposite on the color wheel are orange and blue. If I put orange dot on a blue dot, my eyes tend to see a vibration because those two colors are very different from each other. That, that warm versus that cool. They're opposite on the color wheel. So it really creates a lot of cool interest. The same thing might happen if I put um, red on green. Um, red is a complement to green. Now, that's kind of a red I used with that, uh, that 
Let's see. Let's look at it. More of an orange. If I put the orange dots, a little more orange on some of Ooh, even on that green. Those are popping. So we can see how we can use variety of color, variety of opacity. Let's turn that opacity down so we get some really transparent orange dots. And I'm thinking about my composition. I want to have that variety in those different elements all over the entire composition. I'm really liking my composition. I hope you're liking yours as well. One last thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go to my background, to the to the, the layer below these dots. And I just want to show you one cool feature that you could do. I've got a lot of blues and reds and oranges and some greens and a little bit of purple, but I really don't have any yellow. And so I'm going to choose a yellow, and I'm going to turn my transparency down just a little bit because I don't want it to be really dark. But I'm going to turn that size all the way up. And now I'm using my pastel. Now, again, I'm going to remind you, I'm on that layer below the layer that has my dots. So if I draw on it, what I draw will go underneath those dots. So watch this. Do you see how my dots, my, my yellow is not going over top? It's literally going underneath of those. So I'm going to come back in and color my whole background with this yellow and see what it does to my design. And if I didn't like this yellow, is there anything I could do about it? Yes. I could click undo, and all this yellow would go away, and I could try a different color background if I wanted. I kind of like this one. So uh, one of the reasons I like this yellow background, first of all, <laughs> it sort of creates almost a sense of depth. Depth is when something looks like it goes back into space. And by having that yellow kind of in the back and these sort of light oranges and then darker oranges, and then all of a sudden we get these bright blues. It almost looks like the blues start to come towards us. These or, or these greens that are most op opaque almost seem closer than maybe these transparent dots that maybe look a little further away. All right, guys. I hope you came up with a design you like. Happy Dot Day.